Good morning. My name is Cecilia Carlton, and I will be your community leader for this Mass. We welcome everyone to our celebration, and thank you for joining us this morning. Our guidelines require that your mask cover your mouth and your nose throughout the entire Mass. There will be no contact during the sign of peace, but please acknowledge each other's presence at this celebration. Thank you. Please stand as we welcome our pastor, Father Jerry Hurley. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace. I fear how precious is that he appeared hour I first believe my chains are gone I set free my God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And by the cross, here remains amazing grace, amazing grace. Thank you, Fred. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Thank you. Good morning. 
welcome to our celebration. And as we begin, we pause once again, and we call to mind our need for his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that no, temp no tempest may disturb us, for you have set us fast on the rock of the Apostle Peter's confession of faith, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, I exhort the presbyters among you as a fellow presbyter and witness to the sufferings of Christ and one who has a share in the glory to be revealed. Tend the flock of God in your midst, overseeing not by constraint, but willingly, as God would have it, not for shameful profit, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those assigned to you, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd is revealed, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the nether world shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, 
And whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate an interesting feast, the Feast of the Chair of St. Peter. I guess it's not surprising that a lot of folks would wonder about us as Catholics. They'd say, wow, you're celebrating the Feast of the Chair. Well, not really. It's quite complex. It's uh, celebrating the authority that proceeds from there. The Chair of St. Peter, in other words, the, we're celebrating so if somebody just read this and said, man, I see you Catholics are celebrating today, the chair, uh, they would have a very different impression. It's the authority that Christ passed on that we are really celebrating, not the chair, but the chair is a good symbol. The chair, the Latin word, cathedra, where we get the word cathedral, where the chair re resides in that parish community, um, it, always a noticeable chair in the cathedral, where the bishop presides over his diocese and shares in the authority of St. Peter and in the Church of Rome and under the care of the Holy Father. And it all comes together in that reality, but one certainly might not catch it in he hearing or seeing what we are celebrating today. But what we are celebrating is the authority that has been passed on from Christ to Peter, and through Peter to the apostles, and then to the church at large, and then to the formation of the church that we know today, and all of the cathedrals from which uh, proceeds the authority of Christ to be directed to the faithful, all broken on down. So it's much more than a chair. It's a uh, a celebration of Christ being faithful to his promise, the covenant that we talked about yesterday that God has constantly renewed. And the ultimate renewal of that covenant was in the person of Christ. And then he passed on that authority to Peter, uh, and the chair becomes the symbol of that, where whoever the person is presides from there. Whoever is called to be shepherd or leader or bishop or um, Pope, they are all called to exercise the authority of Christ. And so we read from the letter of St. Peter, I exhort the presbyters among you as fellow presbyters and witnesses to the sufferings of Christ, and as one who has shared in the glory that is to be revealed, I invite you, he says, to really lead the people, to shepherd them effectively, to be eager in that, because the Lord gave you an assignment, an example of how to be and how to lead his flock. And so when the chief shepherd is revealed again, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. And the gospel, not surprisingly, uh, Jesus is traveling along, to, heading toward Jerusalem, and then he turns to them all of a sudden and says, who do people say that I am? What are people saying about me? You know, it's a pretty courageous question, right? I mean, we don't go around and say, what are people saying about me? I hear it even though I don't uh, seek the information, you know? But uh, who wants to hear it? No, it's say, no, no, I don't want to hear it. No, thank you. But Jesus had the confidence in the midst of his disciples and and so they go along with what they think is the plan, what we might think as well. And they tell him, they throw some uh, platitudes at him. They say, well, some people say Elijah. Wow, that's pretty cool. Some people say uh, Jeremiah, one of the prophets of old. Some say John the Baptist. And then he says, hey, guys, cut to the chase. Who do you say that I am? That's what's important. What other people are saying, that's not really that important. Words are easy. Faith is challenging. He says, who do you say that I am? That is the most important question in the gospel. Because how you respond to that is the ultimate difference maker. Who do you say that I am? Savior, Lord, um, uh, Redeemer, the Christ. Who, who am I? 
in your life and in your experience and how does that relationship and authority that we celebrate in the feast of the chair of saint peter how does that come home to you how do you find it how do you find it during this journey of the coronavirus and all the myriad challenges and the unrest who am i how do you find my companionship my friendship my love how do you experience that in your life Lord, we ask it here, our prayers, <clears throat> this morning as we gather in your name, we ask you to hear our prayers and grant them that we may continue growing in your way. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, bishops and pastors, that through their words and actions, they may proclaim the gospel and lead us in repentance during this holy season of Lent. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's life-affirming covenant with humanity, all living creatures, and this whole earth might inspire a renewed respect for life in all of its forms. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of floods and other natural disasters, that leaders may treat them with care and compassion as they mitigate and repair the devastation around them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that these 40 days we spend on the Lenten desert might strengthen us as we proclaim the gospel and build the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our faithful departed brothers and sisters who have died in the hope of rising again, especially Ben Tickner, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the others who have died yesterday, for Phil Axton and for E.O. Garner, Steve Garner's father, and for Jean Hare, Eileen Lawson's niece. We ask you, Lord, to reward them all with the gift of life and bless their families who now mourn their passing. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick in our parish community. We pray for Marilyn Baker, who's having a procedure this morning, and for Jim Waring, the brother-in-law of Debbie Goodman, for Gary Harkins, and for Michael Parsons, and all others who have asked us to remember them in prayer. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, all of these, our prayers we bring to you, we ask that you accept and grant them, for we offer them with faith, in Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also Karen Cox's aunt, uh, May, May Parker, who died last night. We asked the Lord to reward her with life. She has been challenged for quite some time with the health issues and being in hospice and quite an extended time, but she has come to her peace and we Ask the Lord to bless her and her family. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have this bread. We offer you the work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have this wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice of ours may be acceptable to God, who is our almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all is holy church. Except for favor, O Lord, we pray the prayers and offerings of your church, that with St. Peter at, as her shepherd, she may come to the eternal inheritance, for it is through his teaching that she holds the faith in its integrity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, the Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles you watch over it and you protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with all of the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory as we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. And to be glorified, O God, you who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples and so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth the power of your Spirit to sanctify these gifts that they may become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, and look with favor on your church's offering, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit of love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all of your people, we may walk in the ways of faith and hope and may strive to bring joy and trust into our world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead, whose faith is known to you alone. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection Give them the fullness of life, and grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, and there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Apostles, the Martyrs, St. Paul, and all of your saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord." For it is through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now we pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always freed from sin and safe from all distress, as we await in blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. And let us be grateful for that peace and acknowledge it to one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
O God, who at our celebration of the feast of the blessed apostle Peter have nourished us by communion in the body and blood of Christ, grant, we pray, that this redeeming exchange may be for us a sacrament of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God continue to bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended, and we go now in peace to love and to serve God and each other. Thanks be to God. Thank you all for joining us. Glad you could be here, and hope we have a good week and a fresh and refreshing week. And continue to pray for each other and pray for all of those who are in special need at this time. We will have Stations of the Cross every Friday at 6 p.m., followed by Knights of Columbus drive through Fish Fry. Please order your fish dinners on the St. Paul website or the New Church app. Don't forget to pick up your rice bowl this Lent. They are located near the exits, along with some Lenten re reflection materials. Please check the St. Paul website for our Lenten schedule. Adoration will follow immediately after Mass, so please be seated or kneel if you will be staying for adoration. If not, wait, please wait to be dismissed. We will now say our parish commitment prayer. Father. Pardon? Will you be singing? You will? Will you? Oh, okay. Well, we'd be happy for you to lead if you like. Yeah, you got the song? <laughs> well, let us praise him together with our closing song, Your Grace is Enough. Great is your faithfulness, O God. You wrestle with the sin whose restless heart you lead us by still waters into mercy, and nothing can keep us apart. Remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O Lord. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Love and justice, God of Jacob, you use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation, and all your people sing along. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Amen.